what is going on guys today i'm just going to show you the very basic setup of waterline textures now what are waterline textures so if we take a look at our assets that i've got here so we've just got some basic shapes we have this cobblestone material that's tiling across it now if i go to scale that you'll see that will keep on scaling across it's not a texture associated with the actual mesh it's a texture that's as it said it's aligned to the world so if I also go to move it, you'll see none of those points actually change. A little bit blurry as I move it, but yeah. So this isn't very good for the assets you're actually going to move. But it's very good for assets that are going to sit in a certain place or that need to be spread across a wide distance and you don't want to stretch out the UVs and stuff. You can see where it's trying to blend across the surface as well as it gets here. So it's like trying to texture it. It textures in three directions, at least the way I've got it set up. So Z, Y, and X. And as it goes around to the other ones, it starts blending between them. And you kind of see those blend lines if you look in certain areas. So it gets a little stretched around here. Probably see a bit clearer here. So you can see right here, so it's getting stretched. And yeah. And again, if you stretch it, whoa, it goes across an entire surface. So. How do you set one of these up? So if you've got some textures, so let's go to let's go to my moss and let's create it as if we're creating in a warm material. So we're gonna right click and we're gonna go create material. So M I oh not M I M underscore Um World Aligned Textures. I think I spelled that Wild Aligned Ned. It's fine. Uh drag your materials in. And if you were to set this up normally, you'd be plugging these in, it's like your roughness. Your normals and your AO. However, when it comes to doing world align, these will need to become texture objects. So let me quickly do that first. So right click the texture you've dragged in. So you can either right click them and convert, or I could have just put in a texture object like so, and then found the material I wanted to use like that. Right, it's the same way. So let's just convert all of them. I do like dragging and dropping, so this is the way I prefer to do it. Let's Unplug all of these. There you go. Boom. They are now all texture objects. What we've got to do next is right click somewhere, right? World aligned. And we want world align texture. Grab that. I'm going to duplicate that three times, not for our normal map. And you've got to plug them into the text, which presumably stands for texture. That's this texture object literally on this one. There you go. Now, if we right click again and go world align, we want normal. For our normals put that into there now you've got a choice of which direction you actually want them to project to if you project it to just uh, if we actually just go to a uh, our base color if you project it to just y what you'll see is it'll get really stretched at the sides because it's just projecting sort of the um the waterline texture on the z-axis so in a way downwards so imagine it's like at the top and it's sort of casting that texture downwards so it'll get stretched as it gets to the side right but you won't have any of those blending issues. If we go to uh, X, Y, and Z, you'll see it will stretch, but then start blending to one that's on the side. So if we go X and Y, it'll ignore the top, so the top will look stretched, but the sides will be now sort of textured. Uh, in a lot of cases, I just use X, Y, and Z. The, uh, yeah, that's one there. If we go down onto normals, this one's our AO, and this one's our roughness, like that. Now we're not quite done yet because we want to be able to actually tile it. So unlike a normal texture up where you a texture setup where you'd press U left click and you get a texture coordinate and you can start doing stuff with this, you don't need that. If we hold one and left click, or actually S and left click, and we get the scalar node, we can call this tiling. And we can attach this to the texture size. Now you can technically use a free vector, which is what that means here, V3. So if we were to do that, plug that into that. And let's actually disconnect these for a second so I can see what it's doing. If you look, we set these to 111. Uh, no, it's got to be a high number, so 256. Yeah, if you look. Styling normally, right? So it's getting across the entire surface. It looks pretty good. If I were to change just R to 512, it's now going to stretch on just the red axes. I can't even see. Let's try doing it on blue. 
Okay, so you can see it's stretching here. Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to tile it more on one of those axes. I There might be a reason for you guys to do this. I will usually just use a one constant and plug that in, so that way it universally tiles it. So now when I turn this to a value, let's go 256, and as I turn that value down, I like going to the power of 2 because it just feels nice. As I go to turn that down, it will get more and more tiled to 64, 32. As you can see, let's get smaller and smaller. If we turn that up, it will get bigger. It's a grass ball. So yeah, I like using a one constant because I don't tend to have a purpose of tiling it differently on different axes. Um, so uh, on the uh, Z, Y, and X axes. We put that into the texture size of all of them. I can now use this node to control how tiled it's going to be. So we'll leave it at 1024 for now and click apply. If we right click it, oh wait, I didn't plug everything else back in. Let's plug everything else back in. So we've got normals, occlusion, and roughness. There you go. So now we've got that normals and anything. Very, very nice. If we now right click it, make an instance, I'm not gonna call it anything, I'll just call it the default. Drag it onto, for example, the floor. We now have this tiling across the floor. And you can see as it go tries to go over the corner, it does blend, but it looks fairly good. If we open it now, we can turn this down to start tiling it more. And you can actually see it on here, right? As I turn it down, you can see where they're pulling. So you can see the top down project projection sort of moving as the side ones move. Yeah, I can turn that up. And it's not the best tiling texture. You can kind of see it's, uh, you can see where it's sort of duplicating across, especially this little spot here. But it works pretty well. And if you were to throw that onto shapes now, it will just automatically texture around those shapes because it's world aligned, which is very, very nice. So this can save a lot of time on assets that you're like, that you can't, you don't have to type to manually texture, but it can also be really good for assets where you just need a, sort of dense texture that you want to tile across it. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.